once again, and we have a great episode, and we've got something that might, uh, you know, interest you quite a bit. We have our favorite books, and the book is called Alien Agenda by Jim Mars. Does he like break it down like um, just more like he gives you the evidence kind of thing, not try, not super like opinion based, just very much like here's a collection of all the stuff think what you want type of deal yes yes and that's again that's really why i like it a lot is because that is how he presents everything in every single the every single chapter it it breaks it down in that way where it's like this person saw this ufo or you know met an alien or something weird like that but then he also talks about things where People, you know, might have seen like a shooting star around the same time frame or there was a meteor shower. You know, it's I'm just giving an example. That's not specifically in the book. But again, he gives two points of views in every single chapter and possibly an explanation to both. Yeah. So I thought it must be those. But then you clarified that even the Germans were clueless. So I don't know who's the third party. Here? <laughs> well, so who was... Oh. Yeah, and that's the, and that's yeah. the thing about like the UFOs and why I like these books and everything like that is because it's it really makes you wonder. All right, if it's and that, I think that's a perfect example of like that's why aliens or you know maybe not aliens but like UFOs or there has to be some sort of like other life out there is because you have super or world powers at a, like a time of war both documenting something that 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 they can't explain. Yeah, I talk about it a lot on this show because it's like hands down my favorite book. Um, it's Player Piano from Kurt Vonnegut. He doesn't find a lot of meaning in it when he was younger and he was designing all these machines. He was super like gung ho about change and trying to make people's lives better and like be a force of good. But then once it all kind of settles down and it's a time to kind of just enjoy it and sit back, he just stops caring about it as much, I guess is the best way to put it. He becomes very apathetic. It's a lot of apathy in that character. They, you just completely become ostracized from that and yeah so if he wanted to keep moving up which up until this point he had wanted to keep moving up it was not a possible option he knows he goes back and forth with saying parts about how he does love you her name is anita and like um they he does this thing where he does like the italics of it where like she'll say i love you paul and then he does i italic love you anita and it's emphasizing that he's not really sure oh. and then like at the end of the book they, it flips um because uh, yeah she ends up cheating on him with some douchebag uh as they're driving away they they see a bunch of people um around the wreckage right and one of the people specifically they see is this young engineer that he knew that could make anything out of anything he was the smartest like engineer he's ever known he just loved fucking fixing things that was his whole thing and they see him on the street with all this wreckage and the first thing they start doing is building the machines again so the book today that I chose is uh, called The Haunting of Black Witch Grange or Black White Grange. I don't know how to pronounce that. So uh, the story starts uh, in the present where a team of researchers um, gain permission to enter this house which is, some, which is supposed to be haunted. Why are you not? Exactly. That's my first question. Why are you not switching on the lights? <laughs> Why do you want to go with a candle or a tiny torch? And he digs it even further. So basically, sorry, why he started digging it is because he saw the grave and there was a pipe poking out of, I mean, from below the ground. Okay. And he starts digging it and then he hears the scratching sound. And he sees a coffin and he opens it and he finds Elizabeth inside still alive. And her, like, her ha hair has fallen off, like, it's half gone. She's almost naked, her clothes are in tatters. The meat on her bones were chewed off, that Daniel re realizes that she ate herself to keep herself alive. Crediting her pain, I'm just <laughs> talking about him. If he's trying to stop her, he may have as well just not been there. Oh, yeah, huh, yeah, he's stop. a weak bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, no. His his yeah his his technology was as latent as mine today. <laughs> oh okay. Well, that was a that was a very if you stuck it through that entire episode as an audience member, <laughs> thank you. And we hope you liked what you just heard. Uh, we came at you with a lot of different um, topics. We had the aliens. We had 
the technology with humans building it and not learning from their consequences. And then you have uh, Rose with just don't fuck <laughs> with people or they're going to come back and haunt you. Or, oh, jeez. Rip your eyes out. <laughs> yeah, right. Got your eyes out. That is something weird.